Linux-based operating systems aren't perfect. And yes, you can quote me on that. But that doesn't mean they're inferior to Windows or Mac OS. As a matter of fact, there are plenty of things that you can only do on Linux and not on these other operating systems. So today, we're going to take a look at the things Linux can do that Windows and Mac OS can't. And if I missed anything, let me know in the comments and I'll let you know about our sponsor. Thanks to Linode for sponsoring this video. Linode is my favorite solution to run a Linux or gaming server. It's what I use to run my own Nextcloud instance and my own only office server. The interface is super easy to use. They are affordable, they have tons of documentation online, and they have one-click deployable servers for a ton of applications or games, like Pi-hole. Pi-hole is a DNS sinkhole that filters out requests to add serving domains. Basically, it lets you block ads and improve network performance. It lets you actively monitor every DNS request made on your network and block requests as they come in. And you can deploy it in one click on Linode so you can ensure I stay poor. And to get you started, Linode is giving you $100 of free credit to get your own Linux server or gaming server running. To get access to that, just click the link in the description below. So to begin with, we have ultimate portability. As in, you can literally grab your hard drive or SSD from your computer, plug it into another completely different PC, and still enjoy a fully functional install with all your files, applications, and configs. Since the drivers for all the hardware Linux supports are in the kernel, you don't depend on what the manufacturer has pre-installed on your computer, and you don't have anything to install either when you move your disk to another PC. Okay, maybe you'll need to install the NVIDIA drivers if your old PC didn't have an NVIDIA GPU and your new one does, but that's about it. Compare that to the experience on Windows, where you would have to install the drivers for the new motherboard, CPU, Wi-Fi or Bluetooth adapter, sometimes even Ethernet adapter, GPU and more. Your current Windows install might boot on a completely different computer, but it won't be functional and chances are your license key will also not work because Microsoft knows your hardware and thinks you're just trying to cheat them from a juicy license. And on Mac, well, you can't even remove the hard drive at all since it's soldered into the device in almost all of their computers and it has been that way for a long while. It might seem like a stupid advantage, but it's really not. It's invaluable time saved when you move to a new computer and if your current computer is also completely dead, you have nothing to worry about. The second thing is the ability to replace parts of your operating system with others that fit your needs better. Windows and macOS are one size fits all operating systems. They're designed to provide a good enough experience for everyone, but this will never be as well suited to your needs than a system that you picked and tweaked to your liking. And again, it might look useless on paper, but it's called a personal computer. It cannot be personal if your operating system is the exact same as your neighbor, even though your use cases are completely different. So on Linux, you can pick a distro that fits your needs out of the box. But if even that isn't completely perfect, you can replace components get another file manager, get a different window manager, change the init system so you have more control over how your computer starts and what it runs. You can pick the file system that fits your needs best. If you need a workhorse without any fancy stuff, ext4. If you need automatic snapshots, betterfs or zfs. And if you think about it, this modularity is the reason the Steam Deck runs SteamOS, not Windows. Yes, Valve could have paid a Windows license for each of their Steam Decks. The price would have been like 25 bucks higher. All their competitors use Windows, it's doable. But Valve understood it was better to have an OS tailor-made for gaming, even at the cost of not having 100% game compatibility. Aya Neo recognizes that as well as they're working on their own OS to replace Windows on their handhelds. And if Windows or Mac OS fit your needs perfectly, then that's awesome. But if it doesn't, you'll have a much harder time making it fit to your exact use case than with Linux. Third, we have the live USB or live CD. 
This is something only Linux-based operating systems can do. You slap a reasonably sized ISO onto a reasonably sized USB drive and you boot from it and you get a fully usable system. Not only can you try before you install, which is crucial when you're deciding what will run on your PC, but you can also have a distro that only runs through a live USB, like Tails, which means your whole system is in your pocket and you can boot it from any computer you want. Well, as long as the BIOS hasn't been locked and you can access the boot order to make the computer boot on that drive and not on its own hard drive. Windows does not have a live CD, it's install or nothing. And macOS also doesn't have it, although they don't care because you're not supposed to install macOS on anything else than a Mac. And yes, for Windows, I know things like Live 11 exist, but they're not official, they're very probably not legal at all, as I'm pretty sure you're not supposed to redistribute modified Windows systems, and I wouldn't try these tools on any computer of mine. Another big advantage Linux has over macOS or Windows is its ability to run on old hardware, like very old hardware. Have you tried running Windows on a 10-year-old computer or even older? The latest, still supported version of Windows? Good luck without spending time building a custom ISO to debloat the OS and crossing your fingers for drivers to exist for your old hardware and that specific version of Windows. On a Mac, it's even less doable. The latest version of macOS supports at most the Mac Pro from 2013, and that was a very powerful, expensive device when it released. In the UK, they even tried to sell one of these 10-year-old computers for £5,000 refurbished, and that was last week. All other supported Macs are 9 years old or younger. Other than that, you can't do it. On Linux? No problem. Pick a distro that's lightweight and enjoy your old computer like it was new. You'll get patches, security fixes, the very latest applications if you want them, and your system will run fine. Linux will not transform a potato PC into a full-on AAA gaming computer, but at least you can have the latest OS on a very old computer, which you can't on Windows or Mac OS. Fifth thing you can do on Linux, but not on Windows or Mac OS, is driverless printer support. On Linux, printers are detected automatically and work out of the box. No driver CD to try and fit in your computer that doesn't have a CD drive anymore. No need to download anything from the internet. You plug your printer in and you print. Or even better, it's detected automatically over the network and then you print. Well, unless your distro is OpenSUSE, because this apparently does not detect the printers automatically for some reason. But everything else does. Not so on Windows. You will need to install drivers to get anything resembling a good quality print or a scan. Either the manufacturer will have a CD, in which case I hope you can use that, or you'll have to hunt online through cryptic websites to find the exact model among 200 different ones that have almost the same serial number. macOS might also work without installing specific drivers, but the support is not as wide as what Linux offers in my experience. They have something called AirPrint for network printing, but if the printer isn't compatible, you'll need to install the drivers manually. On Linux, this is a huge time saver. It's super easy, super convenient, and yeah, other operating systems are just not as good on that front. And you also avoid all the crappy software that printer manufacturers generally bundle with their drivers. Next is the well-known UI and UX customization. Windows and macOS cannot be customized visually, not out of the box, not more than light or dark theme and an accent color. If you want to change the icons, the general theme, the layout of the desktop, you can't. If you want a taskbar on macOS and a start menu, you can't. If you want a global menu on Windows, you can't. And yes, you can use third-party utilities, but they're generally paid, they're often buggy, they might be completely insecure, and they will use resources on top of what the OS already provides because you can't really fully disable it. With Linux, all major desktop environments let you change how your system looks or works. Yes, even GNOME, with extensions and themes, you can have a radically different experience than the default. Do you want your taskbar at the top of the screen, with the menu on the right and the clock in the middle? Sure. Do you want to copy the macOS layout? Yep, use KDE. 
Do you want to have a deconstructed top bar with completely independent items? You can do it. If you want a different theme for your desktop, you can. Different icons, different fonts, different cursors, anything you want. And even if sometimes on Linux, you will need to use a third party tool, they are all open source. So you can be pretty certain that it doesn't do anything weird to your system. Or a lot of people would already have warned everybody to stay away. The Linux community will warn you to stay away if an app writes logs that are more than two kilobytes because that's bloat. So believe me, if an app collects data or tries to hijack your system in any way, you will know about it. Next is the absence of vendor lock-in. On Linux, you're free to move to anything else whenever you want. Once your distro is end of life and won't receive any patches, you can upgrade for free to the next version. Or if you don't like that new version, you can also just decide to change distributions entirely. On Windows, once your system is end of life, you have to accept to use the new one and pay for it if you missed your shot at getting the free update before. Or you can keep using your old system unsupported and have problems with it, viruses, trojans, and the like. Well, I guess that's also a strong possibility even with the latest up-to-date version of Windows. And on macOS, you can decide not to update, but you lose all the benefits of the new features of your other Apple devices, which might get an update and thus not work correctly with your older version of macOS and its older applications. On Linux, you can even buy extended support to keep a distro alive and patched, even when the distro's developer has abandoned it. For example, Ubuntu has Ubuntu Pro, which is free for everyone up to five machines and will give you 10 years of support for Ubuntu LTS, including 25,000 packages. On Windows, you don't get that, and the software you might want to install will just stop supporting your OS entirely. If you're on Windows 7 or 8, prepare to say goodbye to Steam in early next year, but I guess you already said goodbye to Chrome this year, so you're used to it now. Oh, and there's more. You can apply updates without rebooting your computer on most distros, unless it's a kernel update. And even for that, there are live patching solutions that let you patch the kernel without rebooting. You can also decide not to update at all if you want. Your OS will never force you. On Linux, you can install most of the software you want right out of the box without hunting for it online, be it an application or library. On macOS, the Mac App Store doesn't have libraries and has very few apps. And on Windows, the Windows Store doesn't either. And sure, you could use Homebrew on Mac or Winget and Chocolatey on Windows, but they don't have nearly as much stuff as your average Linux distro's repos. They are not pre-installed and they're command line only. On Linux, all of this can be done graphically or with the command line. You decide, and everything in the repos is actually maintained and supported by your distro, which is not the case for these third-party tools on Windows or macOS. If you want the best command line there is without having to install a subsystem or a third-party tool, Linux is your only choice. If you want to run your system without an antivirus, you can on Linux. You maybe also could on macOS, but you better make sure you don't download software outside of the official websites of the developers. So there you go, a nice list of things that Linux can do that other operating systems just can't. And of course, it doesn't mean that Linux is always better than Windows or Mac OS. That's not the case. So let me know what you think and what I missed in the comments. But what I didn't miss is the inclusion of this segue to our sponsor. If you need a new computer and you plan to run Linux on it, maybe it's time to look at a manufacturer that actually makes devices that run Linux out of the box instead of manufacturers that never cared about Linux and only ship Windows. Tuxedo is based in Germany, but they ship to most countries in the world. They make laptops and desktops that run Linux. The parts have been specifically picked to run Linux and they have a huge range that should suit every price point and every need, whether it's for gaming, for an affordable laptop, for a workstation, you decide they have it. They're all very customizable and all the laptops are openable, repairable and upgradable. So if you need a new computer and you want to run Linux and you want to support Linux's development, click the link in the description below and get yourself a tuxedo computer. 
So, thanks everyone for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't hesitate to like, to subscribe, to turn on notifications, to write a comment. And if you didn't, there's always that thumbs down button that you can click. But let me know down in the comments why. And if you really enjoy the channel, there are plenty of links in the description to support it for LibraPay, Patreon, YouTube memberships, YouTube thanks, PayPal. You know how it works. So, thanks for watching, and I guess you'll see me in the next one. Bye!